If you see our logo, that means you can rest assured that you are buying the best food, clothing, shelter, transportation, hygiene, electronics, and life's necessities that money can buy. Akitax Illustrated, Mr. Robot, Steganography. Steganography is a science of hiding information. It's related to, but different to, encryption. Encryption makes a message unreadable. It scrambles it, while steganography hides it so nobody can find it in the first place. To use an example, you have two allied cities, Alessoria and Babopia, with an enemy state in between, Eveland. Alessoria wants to send a message. Eveland won't let any of Alessoria's or Babopia's messages through and search all packages and goods. Alessoria wants to send Babopia its battle plan. So what they do is take a surf, shave his head, and tattoo the plans onto his scalp. Wait a couple of weeks until his hair grows back and send him through. On the other side, Babopia then shaves his head to reveal the message. And Alessoria and Babopia can attack Eveland on two fronts. Timing his tweets with related news articles, I figured out that Biscuit and Clickety clearly reference guns, food, seashells, or gas for bullets, and the ultimate rock to sleep early. I haven't made the direct connection to a hit yet, but the math of guns plus bullets usually adds up to one thing. Messages are often hidden in other information, such as when Top Gear's James May got himself fired from Autocar magazine for hiding a message across 41 pages of an issue. Modern steganography is generally hidden in computer data, and although focus is generally on files, it can be hidden in network traffic. But let's take the example of an image. Let's say we want to hide the message, Attack Eveland. In an image. Well, we need to make these letters into numbers first. We could make up a table where A is 1, B is 2, and so on, but why reinvent the wheel when we have the ASCII table, which basically every computer in the world uses? Here on the right, I have a cut down version of the ASCII table, and just to show you, so a capital A, 65, T is 84, 84. 65, 67, 75, and so on. When you get down to it and strip everything else out, your basic image is a grid of numbers representing colors. So to keep it simple, I'll use a small monochrome image, Mario from Mario World 2 for the Game Boy. Mario here is actually a grid of square pixels, 20 pixels wide and 24 pixels high. Each with a number from 0 to 254, indicating how dark it is. 0 is jet black, while 254 is bright white, and in between are shades of grey. Now normally an image would be far bigger, something like 1200 pixels across and of course would have full color and compression but we keep it simple. You can see here our psychedelics plumber's hat is jet black with the values of zero and so on. So zero there, zero there. So on the left hand side here we have our standard image of Mario unchanged. This is what we see on the Game Boy screen. Up here we have the exact same image, but this is just represented as numbers. So the black the zeros around here, around his hat, are the black here. Um, and in the middle here, I've just chosen a region where we have uh, light gray, uh, which is represented as 168. So this 168 is this color here. So we can see 168s across here, across here, a few more of them here, a few more here. And I've chosen another region down here 
where we have a bunch of darker grays which are 149 across here now we could use the whole image but I'm just trying to keep things simple here so over here we can see the region I've the two regions here that I've chosen um, and we have the 168s are from the image the original image here then what we do is we add on the ASCII values for the letters that we want to hide in this image so 41 here is A from attack we've got T these 48s are T's we've got another A so we've got attack down here we've got Eveland and I've left out the A just to make it fit so Eveland and what we do is we just take these values here these 68s and we just add on the value for these letters now we could have a more complicated scheme and using some real steganography software these would probably be, have some kind of password that would hide these scatter these around a bit more and you might only change one pixel value rather than changing it adding on 41 but this is just uh, keeping it simple and it does actually quite hide the message quite well so once we've added let's say 168 to 41 over here we end up with a color value of 209 and we go along with one 168 plus 48 is 252 go all the way down along down here we add 149 which is the color value for this gray here to 69 which is the ascii value for the letter e so we're hiding the letter e in this value here and we go along like this and by the time we're done our image looks like this fella down here now blown up like this and compared side to side you can tell that uh, there are slight, slight differences so Mario's jaw for instance is missing now but this image is usually tiny this is only 20 pixels by 24 pixels it's smaller than a desktop icon um, so this is actually really small on the game it would look something like this so you probably would notice the differences unless you had them side by side to compare to on the other side when Bob Opia receives a message he gets this image so what Bob Opia can do then is get if he has the original image like I said, other steganography software might use a password to enable you to find this data. But another way of doing it is to get the original image. So we have the image from Mario here. Let's say Bob Opia just went online and got the original image. And what you can do is just take all the pixel values across this grid and this one. And what you can do is subtract this one. So we added values. We started off with this image and we added values along here in order to hide our message but if we take all the values of the entire grid and we subtract them from the one the the image where we've added on values we end up with the original values back again so just to keep things simple and ignoring all of the image except for the region we used so down along here you can see we have 209 and we subtract the original value of 168 over here we have 252 which is this kind of almost white color here and we subtract the value 168 and what happens across the board then is we wind up with these values 41 84 84 41 67 75 and what we do then is we look up the ASCII table again which is publicly publicly available used on every computer in the world and we just turn these back into letters and we get the message attack Eveland so let's say you don't want to be so obvious or you want to store a more broad set of data what would typically be more likely to happen is let's say our letter T is in binary this is 0101010100 so what you could do is have some kind of a scheme where every byte would better be at the letter T or doesn't really matter once it's 
digital, what you could do is take each of these bits and spread them throughout your image. And what would happen then is for every pixel that's changed, it would only be changed by either no value or just one. So it'd end up being something, let's say if it's 120 to begin with, it'd end up being 121. Now the human eye can't see that difference. There is software to do analysis, but nobody can see a one pixel, one, one value in the difference of, let's say, the color blue on a photograph. Another general idea as well is that you kind of want to hide this data in data that has a certain amount of randomness to it. Photographs and audio recordings tend to be uh, good things to hide this data in because if you take a photograph of, of the outdoors, there's random scattering in the light, there could be trees in the background. That makes it just that bit harder to find a pixel value that's one in the difference. And basically every photograph, even if it's a photograph of a white wall, will have a certain degree of randomness in it. The same with audio recordings, there'll be just a little bit of static on the line or just a little bit of this and that. So unless it's actually produced by a synthesizer or it's a, an image you made of, in paint, there's going to be a certain degree of randomness and you want that randomness to hide your data in. It makes it that much more difficult to find it. Now if they have the original image, usually yes, they can go through it and they can find they can find where it's just that tiny bit different because at this point it's it's just uh, arithmetic. But uh, that's the general idea anyway. Digital audio works by taking analog sound waves and taking samples or slices every few milliseconds, about 44,000 slices per second, and saving what the frequency is in that moment. Here the red lines represent the analog sound wave and the blue dots, the numbers in your computer file that represent that wave. Changing one value slightly, like I have here with this blue dot, is unnoticeable to even the most audiophilic audiophile. So if Elliot wants to make his secret files look like sound on a CD, he can encode this data into the music, burn the disc, and hide it under his dresser. I already mentioned that you want to hide your data in data that has a certain degree of randomness to it, like a photograph. But you also want the data you're hiding to have a certain degree of randomness as well. Because if it has too much of a pattern, you can do pattern analysis and maybe find that data. So another way of doing that is to use encryption. Now, while encryption is separate, encryption and steganography go brilliantly together. Because Part of what encryption does is it takes data that has some kind of order to it and it makes it randomish. Not true random, but if it was truly random, you would never be able to get any data back out of it. So what it does is it takes a letter or an image or something like that and it scrambles it up so that it looks random-ish. If you take that and hide it in other data that has a good degree of random-ish as well. It makes it very hard to find which random belongs to which set of data. It makes your encryption, your steganography sneakier and you want that. Initially I wanted to cover plausible deniability encryption like true crypts hitting containers and data hidden in network traffic but I decided that it was probably better off to do an entire video on that, so I'll be doing that at a later stage. Hollywood hacker bullshit. I've been in this game 27 years, not once have I ever come across an animated singing virus.